But first, let's get into it. What a week. Another week, another flawless batch of Trump appointments. Much like Gremlins 2, the new batch, they all look horrible, and one of them I'd secretly like to kiss. <laughs> Donald Trump has tapped Dr. Oz to lead the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, an agency that oversees health coverage for more than 150 million people, and a role <laughs> that is traditionally called upon a great deal of government expertise. And you know what? Here's where I'm at. Good luck, Dr. Oz. This isn't a TV job. This isn't a flashy job. This isn't Commerce Secretary throwing on a kimono for a photo op in Kyoto on the importance of international relations. This is a real fucking job. And you know who doesn't love having real jobs? Doctors that are like, fuck it, and climb the greasy television pole. And it's not the word. that's the one that's like, fine. <laughs> Trump also announced on Tuesday that he selected his transition co-chair Linda McMahon, WWE co-founder and wife of alleged sexual abuser Vince McMahon, to head up the Department of Education. All right, democracy, let's get ready to crumble. <laughs> let's get ready to crumble. Kind of a mixed blessing to be appointed the head of a department that Trump wants to dismantle. Yes. The president trusts you to sear this ship into those rocky shoals. Really bust it up. McMahon has no experience as an educator, but she is a defendant in a lawsuit alleging that she and her husband were aware that five WWE ring boys were being sexually abused by a ringside announcer in the 80s and 90s and failed to stop it. On the bright side, Linda McMahon has not been personally accused of sexually assaulting anyone, which makes her the Malala of Trump's cabinet. <laughs> So we have Pete Hegseth of Fox News at Defense, Sean Duffy of The Real World at Transportation, Dr. Oz overseeing Medicare and Medicaid, and Linda McMahon at the Department of Education. And then there's Matt Gates. When a number of Republicans in Congress balked at the idea of confirming Gates to the highest post of the Justice Department, Marjorie Taylor Greene jumped in to allege that those other members of Congress have skeletons of their own. What's wrong with having a skeleton in your closet, said RFK Jr., dancing with Rosemary Kennedy's bones? <laughs> She's the one they lobotomized. <laughs> Just a fact about history. Said Green about her colleagues, yes, all the ethics reports and claims, including the one I filed, all of your sexual harassment and assault claims that were secretly settled, paying off victims with taxpayer money, the entire Jeffrey Epstein files, tapes, recordings, witness interviews. If we're going to dance, let's all dance in the sunlight. I'll make sure we do. I am used to Green issuing threats, but this is the first time she's threatened us with a good time. Also... <laughs> That last line has no business being that good. If we're going to dance, let's all dance in the sunlight. All right, QAnon Stevie Nicks. <laughs> cool. <laughs> One Trump advisor told ABC about the Gates confirmation, if you are on the wrong side of the vote, you're buying yourself a primary. That is all. And there's a guy named Elon Musk who is going to finance it. Alas, the public pressure, private buttonholing, threats of primaries, and public shaming, it wasn't enough to overcome the opposition to someone as odious as Gates. For on Thursday, Gates withdrew his name from consideration. There were four GOP senators who were immovable, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Mitch McConnell, and Utah's senator-elect John Curtis, according to sources close to Gates. Said the sources close to Gates? He said that? We're not close. Weird. No. Ew. Then, just before we recorded, Trump nominated his former attorney and former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi for Attorney General. This is my fight. Stop it. <laughs> Who's Pam Bondi, you ask? Not Matt Gates, and that's all we're really gonna offer today. <laughs> It literally just happened. On Monday, Republican Congresswoman and woman who returns things to White House black market just to argue with the salesperson, Nancy Mace, introduced a resolution to ban transgender women from using women's restrooms in the U.S. Capitol. I don't know why you're booing trans women. The Republican... <laughs> now, why did Mace do this? Democratic Congresswoman Sarah McBride is about to become the first transgender person to serve in Congress when she takes office in January. And Nancy Mace likes to fill the silence in her life with headlines and attention. Mace, enjoying the press and fundraising she's doing, later added to her stunt, posting a video of her taping a handwritten sign saying biological to the woman's restroom sign. That's right, Capitol visitors. If you want to use the bathroom, Nancy Mace is going to need to see your genitals. Anyway... <laughs> 
if any teed up post top surgery trans men want to travel to the Capitol and use these biological women's bathrooms en masse, I encourage it. Just a caravan of beefy fucking trans guys. It's what Nancy Mace has required. <laughs> Get in there. When asked if the rule was designed to specifically target McBride, Mace told reporters, yes and absolutely, and then some, I'm absolutely 100% going to stand in the way of any man who wants to be in our women's restroom, in our locker rooms, in our changing rooms. I will be there fighting you every step of the way. There I go, Googling, does Congress have HR again? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. <laughs> On <laughs> and they don't. On Wednesday, House Speaker Mike Johnson issued the trans bathroom ban for Congress, saying all single-sex facilities in the Capitol and House office buildings, such as restrooms, changing rooms, and locker rooms, are reserved for individuals of that biological sex. Added Johnson, women deserve women's only spaces, like the kitchen. When <laughs> His words. <laughs> When asked what else women deserve, Johnson froze, having literally never considered it. <laughs> Given that trans visitors and guests at the Capitol have been using bathrooms without incident, the Capitol also has unisex bathrooms, and each congressperson's office has a private bathroom for them to use. The Republicans are just trying to shame McBride for being trans while grabbing headlines to prove their fealty to hyper-engaged anti-trans weirdos on the internet, ultimately achieving nothing except making trans people more fucking nervous than they already are about going to the bathroom in public. For her part, McBride responded, I'm not here to fight about bathrooms. I'm here to fight for Delawareans and to bring down cost-facing families. Like all members, I will follow the rules as outlined by Speaker Johnson, even if I disagree with them. This effort to distract from the real issues facing this country hasn't distracted me over the last several days. Each of us were sent here because voters saw in us something that they value. I have loved seeing those qualities in the future colleagues that I've met. I hope all of my colleagues will seek to do the same with me. Bitch, good luck. <laughs> Uh, it's a great statement, refusing to take the bait. Me, on the other hand, I'm here to fight about bathrooms. The trans bands, but also the hand dryers. They're loud, they do not work, they blow germs everywhere. Give us paper towels, leave trans people alone. AOC rightfully pointed out that what all of this boils down to is an attack on women. And I think we should all just watch what she had to say in full. What Nancy Mace and what Speaker Johnson are doing are endangering all women and girls. Because if you ask them, what is your plan on how to enforce this? They won't come up with an answer. And what it, it inevitably results in are women and girls who are primed for assault because they want, because people are gonna wanna check their private parts in suspecting who is trans and who is cis and who's doing what. And so the idea that Nancy Mace wants little girls and women to drop trow in front of who? An investigator? Who would that be in order because she wants to suspect and point fingers at who she thinks is trans is disgusting. It is disgusting. And frankly, all it does is allow these Republicans to go around and bully any woman who isn't wearing a skirt because they think she might not look woman enough. People have a right to express themselves, to dress how they want, and to be who they are. And if a woman doesn't look woman enough to a Republican, they want to be able to inspect her genitals to use a bathroom. It's disgusting. And everybody, no matter how you feel on this issue, should reject it completely. What are they doing? They're doing this so that Nancy Mace can make a buck and send a text and, and fundraise off an email. They're not doing this to protect people. They're endangering women. They're endangering girls of all kinds. And everybody should reject it. It's gross. Thank you. Thank you. That was really good. Speaking of toilets, Vivek Ramaswamy <laughs> announced this week that he and Elon Musk, the co-heads of the Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE, will launch a podcast about their endeavor. I'm focused on making sure that we actually accomplish the goal rather than just talking about it. So to that end, for the next little bit, Elon and I are going to start a separate track of DOGECasts that explain exactly what we're doing to the public. <laughs> Ramaswamy then pivoted directly into his first ad read, saying, tired of waiting in line at the post office? Good. We just eliminated the post office. <laughs> Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Elon and Vivek, they're going to want to make this about scientific research projects that sound silly or expensive boondoggles, of which there are many. But take a look at this from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. The federal government 
is an insurance and pension service that also has a few long-range bombers. 75% of the budget, 75% of the budget is military spending along with health insurance for seniors and children, retirement and health benefits for veterans, social security for retirees and people with disabilities, and of course, interest on the national debt, most of which is owned by Americans, which means it goes back into the economy. All the fun stuff, the look at these bozos, wasting our money stuff, is a tiny fraction of spending. Elon has talked about cutting $2 trillion. You can't do this without cutting the military and the benefits that are very popular, broadly felt, and keep tens of millions of Americans out of poverty. And lo and behold, while Elon and Vivek are setting up their microphones as a freelance audio engineer, Google's ways to kill himself, Trump's <laughs> economic advisors and Republicans in Congress have begun discussing possible work requirements and spending caps for Medicaid, food stamps, and other safety net programs in order to offset the cost of tax cuts. In other words, cutting the benefits that go to 70 million Americans in order to cut taxes for the 400 wealthiest families in America. Just one example of a proposal, this is, this is something they're discussing, is a rule to stop the president from increasing the value of food stamps without congressional approval. It's not the kind of thing that'll get a lot of coverage. And actually, President Biden, and this bothered Republicans, issued the largest ever, the largest ever, permanent increase in food stamps. Does anybody here, did anybody here know that happened? You, some of you knew. Did anybody know how much it is? Do you want to know how much it is? How much the largest ever increase in food stamps was? It was $36 per person. $36 per person per month. Not a lot of money, but for a lot of people making a big difference in their lives and in the lives of their children. So a little over $400 per year per person. Republicans hated this. And now they want the president to no longer have this authority. Now the Trump tax cuts for households making more than a million dollars. What do you think the average benefit is for those taxpayers? It's $70,000 per year. As you go up in income, the cut is worth much more than that. If you earn at least $5 million, the cut is worth nearly $280,000 per household. So in order to cut one rich person's taxes by $280,000, so their take home goes from 2.6 million to 2.9 million, let's say, they will stop the kind of policy that allowed 700 people to get $36 extra per month to be able to afford more healthier food. Is that what the undecided voters who disliked Trump but were furious about inflation wanted? Is that what Republicans campaigned on doing? Of course not. They campaigned on stopping migrant trans prisoners from becoming fabulous. But... <laughs> But that's the real plan. Elon and Vivek podcasting about lazy bureaucrats in D.C. And, and expensive chairs at the Department of the Interior. All of that is a sideshow. They want to cut taxes for the rich. They will either run up the deficits or cut Social Security and health care and food stamps to do it. And they will start with programs for the poor, but it will not end there. The last time Republicans controlled Congress and the White House, but for a handful of Republican senators saying no, they would have repealed the Affordable Care Act, jeopardizing the health insurance of 30 million people, not to mention increasing costs for co-pays and pre-existing conditions that hit everybody else. Earlier this year, earlier this year, the Republicans in the House unveiled a budget that raised Social Security's retirement age, which is just a sweeping cut for future retirees. Did anyone here know about that? Did anyone here know that 170 Republicans endorsed raising the age for Social Security eligibility? Of course not, because Trump wore an apron and Kamala did a whoopsie on The View. And because we live in the information environment that functionally exists to make the simple reality of the choice in our elections unintelligible. Bernie wants to say Democrats abandon the working class. Centrists blame identity politics. I personally blame Joe Biden and, of course, Chapel Roan. But, Re <laughs> but Republicans campaigned like Norma Ray and governed like the heart attack at the mill that killed her father. <laughs> Is that for anyone? And, <laughs> and I'm sorry to say, but this is why we have to keep fighting, because we have to make sure people understand what Republican governance, not just the outrages and dramas and insults, but actual governance means. Okay. Now, speaking of making me sick, dozens of people have fallen ill across 18 states after contracting E. coli from organic carrots. <laughs> Got him, said Elmer Fudd, standing over the corpse <laughs> of Bugs Bunny. Okay, I actually really am excited to talk about this. Some fans at early screenings of the Wicked movie have, have been singing along in the theater. Yeah, to the frustration of other theater goers. I saw this story and it was shocking because it never occurred to me that people would sing along during the movie. Maybe that's naive. 
because it's so obviously selfish and rude. But this is what one person told the New York Times, a self-described theater kid who said, people who are judgmental in that way, please wait to stream it. Don't go the first day and yell at people for singing, for sharing that kind of joy when we've been waiting so long in anticipation for this movie. No deal. <laughs> I want everyone here to know this, and I mean this. This is a sincere, this is sincere. I am seeing this movie on Saturday. The last couple of weeks have been so stressful and sad. I have a reservoir of frustration and rage in my soul. And if people start singing in my theater, I promise you they will stop or I will make an extraordinary scene that will take them all the way the fuck out of the experience. I'm not kidding. I'll ruin it for them. I'll ruin it for everybody. Last night when I read this story, I turned to my significant other and I turned, to, I really did. And I said, hey, if someone starts singing in our theater, I'm going to tell them to stop and I need your permission to take it all the way. <laughs> if you say I can't, I will honor that. You are, I, whatever, if, you, if you're not cool with it, I'll just take it. But if you give me permission, I will fight to the fucking end. <laughs> and they agreed because I think they saw the crazy in my eyes. Because if you think I'm gonna sit there in silence and watch Cynthia Erivo sing Defying Gravity in concert with you because we have collectively abandoned all manners and common courtesy, think again. So, so if you care to find me, look to the AMC Burbank. As someone told me lately, everyone deserves the chance to watch a movie in a theater without listening to rude, self-centered, internet-addled freaks forgetting that they are not the center of the universe. How does... How does Trump happen? We let the little things slide and then we let the big things slide. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. I will go to jail. <laughs> oh no, my parents have just got in and I'm stuck in jail? Oh no. No thank you, no need to post bail. <laughs> Everyone here agrees with me, right? Yeah. Yes. Right, that's madness. Yeah. Madness. Yeah. yeah, you don't fucking do it on Broadway. I gotta tell you something. People do not know how to go to the theater anymore either. A lot of people getting up to go to the bathroom just before and just after the intermission. You fucking hold it. That's why there's an intermission. Unless it's medical. It's not all medical. I can't say anything because sometimes it's medical. And that's life. And that's hard. And that's part of the theater. That person, remember that person who pooped next to Hillary Clinton? Remember that? And everyone was like, oh my God, somebody pooped next to Hillary Clinton because they didn't like her. No, it was just an old lady who pooped sometimes. <laughs> and finally, in a bizarre story I've been following closely, Kayaker Ryan Borgward, <laughs> Kayaker Ryan Borgward <laughs> was presumed dead after he disappeared on a lake in August. However, strange signs led police to suspect the missing man may actually have faked his own death and fled to Europe. Hey, he stole my idea. <laughs> Now, if there is one rule for faking your own death, it's that you better not let TikTok pick up on it. Following the disappearance, a man on the street interview featuring a person who sure seemed like Borgward, a real Borgwardian type, <laughs> Borgward-esque, if you will, surfaced, in which he asks the extremely level-headed host this question. Can you advice on anything? I go to Uzbekistan or stay here? Say that one more time. Do I go to Uzbekistan or stay here? Do you have family there? No. Why do you want to go? To meet a woman. To meet a woman. So you've given up on meeting someone here? No, I'm married. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> how deeply uncomfortable. Isn't there something, don't you just get a really bad vibe off of how he says that? Yeah. Something deeply troubling. Sorry to the women of Uzbekistan. We are sending you guys who belong at the bottom of our lakes. <laughs> this week, authorities confirmed what we had suspected all along. Borgward lives. <laughs> authorities have been in touch with the missing married father of three in Eastern Europe, but so far he is refusing to return to the U.S. Said Borgward, how mad does she seem? <laughs> <laughs> 